One of the questions I get asked most often is, is it too late to plant fill in the blank? Now, to be fair, I get that question in April, but a lot of times it's right now in July. Right now, you can pretty much grow any crop from transplants from the garden center. But what can you still plant from seeds in July? In this video, I'm gonna go over my top seven choices of seeds you can plant right now in July and still get a harvest no matter what climate you live in. Speaking of climate, you guys are watching from all over the world. So to make this video relevant to everyone, instead of speaking in zones or areas, I speak in frost dates. In spring, we anticipate our last frost date, the average date where you don't need to worry anymore about frost and most planting outdoors can be done. Once we're in mid to late summer, we start to dread the coming of our first frost date. That's the average date your area sees its first frost and depending on the crop, could mean the end of your growing season. The bottom line is you need to know these numbers. The good news is they're easy to find. I'll leave a link in the video description to plant maps where you can find your first and last frost date and hardiness zone wherever you live in the world. Then all you have to do is look at a packet of seeds and usually on the packet, it's gonna tell you days to maturity or days to harvest. So let's say we're growing squash and on the packet, it says it's 60 days from seed to harvest. Then all you have to do is look at your calendar, find your first frost date, and just make sure you've got at least 60 days before that date. Now, if for whatever reason, the packet doesn't give you that information, just Google the variety and days to harvest, and it will give you the answer. All seven crops that I'm featuring in this video have a seed to harvest of 60 days or less. That means if today the video is coming out on July 8th, as long as your first frost date falls after September 8th, all of these crops are good for you. All right, the first crop of the seven, I've already mentioned, it's summer squash. And it's a really good one because summer squash really takes off fast in the hot weather and you will have ready to harvest fruit in less than eight weeks, sometimes in six, depending on your climate. And you'll get a good crop out of these in almost any climate. The next crop are beans. Now you can do pole beans or bush beans. They take about the same amount of time to grow, about 60 days. Now, bush beans are great because at this time of year, you may not have room to put a whole teepee of pole beans in your garden. But bush beans are small, so I'm just gonna tuck some in wherever I find a little spot. They need about eight to 10 inches of space. This variety I'm planting is provider, and I'm just gonna put two in each spot. Now, if you consistently have summer temperatures of 90 degrees Fahrenheit or above, you're gonna wanna find a spot for your beans that gives them a little bit of afternoon shade. You also wanna make sure that you keep the ground moist at all times. Beans don't wanna dry out. A nice heavy layer of mulch is gonna help conserve moisture so they can thrive during the hot weather. Now, my next choice is basil. Basil is a warm weather herb that I plant in spring as a companion to my tomatoes to keep the hornworms away. But after a couple of months, it gets a little less tasty than it was back in the beginning. So what you can do is just cut it way back and it will regrow or you can let it go to flower because the pollinators absolutely love it. And you may as well let it go to flower and start over again in another area with fresh plants. Basil grows really fast from seed and you could be harvesting fresh leaves in as little as four to six weeks. I just sprinkle some basil seeds around the garden wherever I see a little blank spot. So by the end of the summer, I pretty much got basil all over. Okay, number four is cucumbers. Now. Cucumber is a hot weather crop. They grow super fast, less than 60 days, and they're really prolific. Now you guys have been asking for a complete growing guide for cucumbers. I'm working on that right now, and I will have it out toward the end of the month. So make sure that you're subscribed and you have the bell notification clicked. So I have a question for you. Do you like okra? Let me know in the comments. Three out of four of my grandparents were from the South, so I grew up eating it. Fried, of course and I still love it today. Mm. Okra is a hot weather crop, so July is a great time to sow those seeds. They don't take up much space at all, have beautiful flowers, are very prolific, and can be harvested in 60 days or less. Number six is sweet corn. Sweet corn is a great one to plant in July because it will take off really fast. The only thing you have to worry about with corn in hot weather is you don't want it to dry out. You need to make sure that ground is constantly moist. A layer of mulch would be great for this as well. Otherwise, you're gonna get dried out corn kernels and who wants that? The last one is a twofer, zinnias 
and cosmos. I've made a huge effort to attract more pollinators and beneficial insects to the garden by interplanting the vegetables with flowers. The cool season flowers are petering out now in July. Dill, fennel, calendulas, and nasturtiums. They're all just getting a little tired looking. Okay, some just look plain dead. So it's time to pull them out and make way for more crops and summer flowers. Xenias and Cosmos both love the summer weather, and if you deadhead them regularly, they will bloom all the way to frost. So now you've got all your bare patches filled in. But to keep the garden going strong, you don't need miracle Grow. I've got a video right here that will show you fertilizer for every budget, even free. See you guys next time.